Are you ready to learn about Kubernetes release notes? Excellent. This is a story of GitHub screenshots and Rick and Morty. Um, just to start, this is me. I have a little bit, <laughs> this is so funny because it's just you and me. I have a little bit to say on release notes. I've been part of the release notes team for the last four quarters. So 114 through 117. Come on in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just my name. Yep. <laughs> He's my best friend, so this is just going to be me doing the thing, like doing the presentation to him anyways. Um, anyways, you actually don't know this. So I have been on the release notes, well, the release team for the last four releases, 114 through 117, and then for two of those, I was focused solely on the release notes process in the release team. So I kind of want us to take a seat on the couch and watch some intertemporal instead of interdimensional cable. Um, we're going to jump through channels in time, and we're going to see the history of release notes in Kubernetes because it has, taken, it has taken many different turns to get to where we are and where we're going. Um, but first, something to consider is imagine that there's a new Kubernetes release. It's shiny, new, and you know, cool. What, what new alpha features are there that you know, I could turn on for my cluster? But then like, reality sets in. Uh, if I upgrade to this version, what the hell is going to happen to me? Are there breaking API changes? Uh, has this feature I've built our entire application uh, on become uh, deprecated. Enter release notes. Uh, release notes are just a change log for identifying differences between version X and version Y. Uh, enter release notes. Uh, they're an effort by the community to inform users inward and outward facing of upcoming changes. Enter release notes. Um, release notes are fields added to a PR template to help automate changes. Um, enter release notes, markdown published at each release. And it's also a website. This slide became really busy because there is now a lot going on with release notes in Kubernetes. Um, so where the hell did we come from? Kubernetes has been around a while, uh, almost six years. Have release notes always been this big and this complex? No, uh, we started with humble beginnings. Uh, Kubernetes point four is really the first change log that I could find and it is literally one entry and a date. So we started extremely small. Things started getting a little bit more complex in point five as the project started ramping up more and more. I remember when we installed Kubernetes point four back in 2014, it seemed really complicated and we couldn't keep up with the trajectory of all of these changes. Because I mean, these were, these were game-breaking changes within Kubernetes and like even with a proper change, log, we just couldn't keep up. And as you can see, now there are totally different sections instead of just one entry. So you have features, and then you have cluster and cloud support, whatever that means. Point six and point seven, it became very obvious that release notes were not the priority. Um, they occurred afterwards when there was time. Uh, that's how fast things were moving back then. Also, because it is literally just us, I was actually going to pop open each of these release notes in GitHub and scroll through and show them. We're going to go ahead and skip that. Um, point 15, they started using this magical thing called the release page. Um, this is a GitHub feature, and they stopped doing the idea of publishing Markdown. Um, it stuck around through um, point 0.17. And they started breaking things up into better sections. And then from point 0.17 on with the release page, um, things were good. The GitHub release page seemed like a really good match made in heaven for Kubernetes and all the, like collating all of the release notes. Um, and this is actually how they primarily published release notes uh, until Kubernetes 1.2. 
And then this whole new format came along. Um, mind you, it's a cleaner page. There's a lot more information. Um, but this kind of seems a little auto-generated. I doubt anyone actually made this uh, by hand. So what made this? This is a tool called Anago. Uh, Anago is something that is written in Bash. As with everything in Kubernetes, we have to come, uh, we have to over-engineer a solution and first write it in Bash. It worked well with, uh, for Kube Proxy, and it will surely work well with our release tooling. And it does eventually lead to some memes about preventing Bash fires. Um, this was one of those instances where I was going to click and actually go through uh, Anago and the Rel Notes Bash script. We're not going to do that. Um, anyone that has ever had to work on Anago in the last two years did not really have a good time. So now we're at Kubernetes 1.5. Um, there's this concept of the release notes draft. Anago would actually publish a release notes draft for whoever was shepherding the release through to see what release notes were going to get published and maybe add a little bit of an editorial eye to it. Because it's really just looking at PR, uh, PR comments and then taking the PR comments and throwing them into Markdown. That's how this was working in the background. But then in 1.6, there was this idea of a Kubernetes release team. So together we're stronger and the release teams form. Um, the one thing of note is even though there, were there was a release team, there was not actually a release notes role yet. Um, the features lead of the release team was responsible for the notes wrangling at the time. Did you know that? Eeyore did that for a long time. Uh, in Kubernetes 1.7, uh, someone, people in the Kubernetes community may know, Brian Grant, uh, filed a very lengthy issue called New Release Notes Process and Guidance because it became unwieldy that the release notes getting published were just incredibly long and very difficult to parse and grok and do anything meaningful about. But in Kubernetes 1.8, the release notes role now became part of the release team. Um, that was one of the actions that, that occurred directly from the issue that Brian Grant uh, created. And then it was good for a time. We were actually, nothing really changed between release notes and Kubernetes um, from 1.8 to 1.12. Uh, release notes were what I would consider in a stable state. But as with all things, engineers have to engineer, and we have to try and make something perfectly level. So then we decided to start rewriting how we generate release notes to make it more of a Kubernetes native thing in Golang, rather than a dumpster fire bash script. I shouldn't really say it was a dumpster fire. It was incredibly stable. It was just a very complicated bash script. So let's make a Golang tool out of, uh, tool out of it. So Mike happened to be one of the release notes shadows at the time, took it upon himself to write a release notes tool. And an interesting thing was his release notes tool wound up staying in his own personal repo for the next three releases, uh, 112, 113, 114. Um, so okay, we now have this logic of we now use this Anago script. Anago does all the Kubernetes builds and all the release notes, but we also now have this Golang tool to generate all of these release notes. How do they work together? They, they work together. Let's just keep Bash and Golang together. Why not? Um, in Kubernetes 1.14, I became a release notes shadow and had this really weird idea from my background being a web designer. Let's just generate an actual website. At the time, the markdown that was being generated was literally 30 pages. Like for, for a single Y stream release, it was 30 pages and very unwieldy. So if you're trying to like figure out if there was anything networking wise that may have changed, did, 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 am I affected or not? You couldn't do that unless you were like control effing certain phrases. Let's, let's make it easier. We already have all these labels and automation around our PRs, so let's you know, do the same thing around our uh, change log. So in 1.14, I created this POC site. Uh, no one was really using it. It was really just, hey, can you take a look at this, see if there's anything we should add. Um, there's quite a lot we should add. 
Um, in Kubernetes, there is this concept whenever you are doing a user-facing change or a cross-sig or special interest group um, effort to create a cap. That's really just to, uh, it's a Kubernetes enhancement proposal meant to track our effort uh, across the project. So I wrote a cap about release notes and one of the chairs of SIG release and also SIG PM, Augustus, is all about caps and his lovely face has to be wherever I say caps. So in 1.16, that proof of concept that I wrote wound up being one of like uh, linked within the release notes. So we kind of did this whole dual branch. We would publish the markdown, but also, hey, there happens to be a link to relnotes.cates.io. Please look at that. Um, and then several people tweeted it, and it was actually, um, we watched our like, Google Analytics go whoop. So that was nice, and we got some really meaningful feedback. Um, this I will click into, if it'll work. So part of the problem here is all of these are different labels. Literally all of these are different labels and we're tracking different releases. So even though this is now one of the ways that you can consume release notes, it itself is still complicated because we are such a complicated project. So I'll get into kind of future state uh, and how we're trying to tackle that later. So around 116, there was this concept uh, called release engineering. So r at the time, everything uh, regarding releases, publishing releases, um, wrangling people into releases, it was part of the release team. So it was this mix of technical roles and kind of project management. Um, so Augustus had a uh, wonderful idea of breaking out the technical roles from the PM and kind of just release wrangling roles, and that was called release engineering. Um, it became a subproject under uh, SIG release, and this kind of, you'll see where release notes is going because it becomes more of a technical role than a wrangling role. So where are we right now? This is the process to generate release notes um, from the start of a pull request to it uh, being published either in the markdown or in the release notes website. So as part of a pull request in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, there is a template where you have to type in whether this is a user-facing change or not and what the user-facing change is. Um, release notes members uh, on a weekly basis will generate both a draft of the markdown and a draft of the website, uh, and that will automatically pull those uh, templated fields and then make it you know, nice and pretty. Um, once we are ready to actually do a release, they will PR things against the SIG release and the release notes repo um, because SIG release has the markdown draft. The release notes repo has the JSON. Um, the editorial process occurs where it's really just, okay, are we all using the, uh, the same format, the same verbs, all that. Um, and then once the Kubernetes uh, version is actually released, comms are sent out, and then the final uh, release notes are PR'd in. Uh, we try to PR them in a little bit before the actual release occurs, so it depends on kind of people's timing. So uh, literally this release, I'm not sure if you knew this. He's on the release team right now, so I'm gonna bother him. But literally this release, we have started phasing out uh, Anago and then doing a lot more with uh, Golang. So there is, as part of the release engineering effort, uh, they're slowly but surely replacing bits of Anago's functionality with purpose-built Golang. And one of the things was actually using uh, the Golang tool as part of their release process. So we are slowly but surely like automating the release notes process rather than making it a, uh, a manual one. So looking forward, we actually still have to meet all of the goals of our cap. One of the goals of our cap was being able to automate everything and we're, so, we're almost there. Um, so we need to finish that before we get any other crazy ideas, but we'll probably get there within the next quarter or so. Um, part of that plan involves cruise control. 
So like I said, automating and the publishing of release notes to the website is currently underway. Um, that's going to involve uh, publishing the JSON to uh, like GCS or an S3 bucket and then pulling all of those and um, having the website pick them up. Um, another idea that we've discussed is uh, allowing end users to be able to subscribe in some way to types of changes uh, and doing a sort of push notification to a group if certain criteria is met. So pushing a change log to people that is relevant to them rather than expecting them to look at the release notes every time. Um, so if you are so inclined to go and visit the website, please help us out. It's relnotes.cates.io. Um, if you look at the top right, once you visit the website, there's some uh, about link. You'll get the uh, kind of TLDR of the project, but there is also a link to a survey because we need more feedback. This is all more end user driven. Um, so Rick and Morty belongs to Adult Swim. Uh, the Road to El Dorado belongs to DreamWorks. Steven is absolute meme fuel and everyone loves Kubernetes that's in the community. Um, I get to do cool stuff at Red Hat, so I have to shout out them. Thank you for letting me do stuff, you know, on their time, but being part of the community. And hopefully, I will see you next year. And wow, that was 16 minutes. I figured I would do at least 20. Thank you. <laughs>I did. I did skip literally all of the pa me opening up GitHub pages and explaining scripts, but I'm okay with that for this. Do you actually have any questions? Because I don't know how much you know about like Sasha and the KREL stuff with release engineering. Cool. Do either of you have any questions? I mean, don't. Don't dig if you don't have one, it's okay. <laughs>